asked me now to consider the logistics of Tuesday's events. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining me. Good evening. It was always uh, absurd, wasn't it, Neil, to expect a 96-year-old monarch to make an 800-mile round trip back to London just because of the ludicrously protracted process of electing a new Conservative leader and therefore a new Prime Minister. A process that, of course, as we all know, has paralysed the government for the last two months. And so what is going to happen is on Monday, uh, when the votes of the Conservative Party members are counted uh, and a, a winner is declared and the smart money is on Liz Truss, that's what the bookies say, um, on Tuesday morning, Boris Johnson will get on an aeroplane and he'll fly up to Aberdeen and he'll drive up Royal Deeside and he'll see Her Majesty in Balmoral Castle and he'll tender his seals of office and she will say goodbye, and there they are saying hello, uh, and he will cease to be prime minister. A little bit later in the day, the winner of the contest will fly up in a separate aeroplane. And by the way, Neil, we're paying for the fuel that's going into these uh, RAF <laughs> Queen's Flight aircraft. Uh, and she will then meet uh, the Queen. The process is called kissing hands. Uh, a lot of kissing of hands doesn't go on. They shake hands, actually. But the Queen will ask her the question, uh, can you form a government? And she will say, yes, I've got a majority in the House of Commons of 85 or whatever it is, 86. And then the Queen will say, go away and do it. And the Queen will be extremely pleased to utter that sentence because in that hiatus between Boris leaving and the winner arriving, the power of the country will revert to Her Majesty the Queen. She will have the power in her hands. There will effectively be no prime minister. I mean, I'm not saying that the Queen is going to launch a nuclear attack or do anything like that, but she will want to follow the Constitution, which she has always done very strictly throughout the 70 years of her reign, and she will be very pleased to hand over the responsibility to the first Lord of the Treasury, which is the official title, of the, of the Prime Minister. And um, you will know, I mean, you're a Scot, you've, you've probably been to the Braemar Games, you'll know how much she will have missed going there today. Mm -hmm. She it was a highlight of her Highland holiday. But there's, um, there are, there's always precedent in Britain, and there is a precedent because Queen Victoria refused to interrupt her Highland holiday, and she required... Lord Salisbury, who was the Conservative her Prime Minister at the end of the 19th century, to come to see her at Balmoral. He was absolutely furious about this. And to show his disdain, he travelled up by train and he went third class. He thought if he, if he sat in a third class carriage and he was the grandest of grandees, you know, he was the Cecils of Hatfield Hall, nobody would notice him. But he, he did go up because when push comes to shove, uh, the Queen has got the power. <laughs>